Now there's many different uh, styles and types of curtains out there, but I'm going to show you in this video a really simple way of making professionally finished, mitered cornered, fully lined curtains and how to measure your window so you get the perfect fit as well. So this is a little mini version of the curtain that I'm going to show you how to make. Um, it is fully lined. We've got the header tape across the top. It's got hooks in there, so you're going to need um, some kind of rail above your window and it's got really neatly mitered corners at the bottom there as well. Again, there's many different ways of making these, but I think this is probably going to be the simplest way for you to make them. Now, fabric-wise, um, I like quite a heavy fabric, and I always like the lining in there because it gives a lovely drape. It gives a nice weight. It helps to keep, keep the light out of the room, and it helps to keep the warmth in as well. If you're going to have um, a lighter weight of fabric, maybe a cotton or a quilting weight of cotton, then do be aware that the light may actually come through a little bit. But maybe it's for a conservatory or a, a room that you want the light to come in, so that's absolutely fine. With your lining, the best type of fabric that I found is a cotton sateen. If you want a particular colour, you can't find it in the sateen or you wanted a printed fabric, then there's nothing wrong in using cotton as well. And interlining is a word that you may have heard. Interlining is actually like um, a, a flannel layer that goes in between the outside curtain and the lining and that's going to give you extra warmth, but it actually makes your curtains look really padded as well. But we're not going to do this in this video because this one is for beginners. This one, remember, is a very simple um, style of curtain. So, you've chosen your fabrics and you've chosen your lining. A header tape is going to be the next thing that you're going to need. I like to use a three inch header tape on, on most of my curtains. It's a nice depth. And this is basically um, the tie that goes across the top of your curtains. You pull this up and it's going to give you all of those pencil pleats. There's lots of different styles. Pencil pleats, again, are going to be the easiest one for you to start with. There is a, a narrower tape. You can buy one inch tape, two inch tapes, um, oh, actually all the way up to six inch tapes. I wouldn't use a big six inch tape on a smaller size of window though. So that's for big long curtains. Um, your two inch for short shorter curtains or finer fabrics, your three inch is probably going to be the one that you use most of all. Um, and there are kind of clear tapes available as well if you're going to sew sheer fabrics like, like voils or nets as well, but that's, um, that's a whole other video. Now let's have a think about measuring your curtains. Now if your curtains are going to sit in the recess of the window, so they're actually right on the window frame, inside kind of the wall if you like, um, you're, you're going to need to measure the exact height of the window so that your curtains sit perfectly onto the windowsill and up to the top of the recess as well. So measure the length there and then you're going to add five inches to the length. And then the width, that's going to be the width of the window inside the recess. This time you're going to add seven inches to the width and then double it. And that allows you, with that extra seven inches, to have your return. So that's the piece of fabric that goes around the side uh, to the lining side. That gives a really nice neat finish. Um, on the curtains that you're making, it's going to be three inches, so it's scaled up from this little one that we're looking at here. But it gives a lovely finish and it saves you having to try and um, sit the seam right on the edge. You're never going to be able to do that, it'll never sit flat, so that's a more professional way of actually doing it. So that's measuring up for a recess. If your curtains are going on the outside of the window, which most of them will be, you're going to have some kind of curtain rail um, across the top. So measure from the top of that rail all the way down to the length that you want the curtains to be. And that's entirely up to you. Don't have them too short so that when you pull them back you're going to see uh, the window sill or you get drafts underneath there. So have them a little bit longer than the window sill. There is nothing wrong with having a really lovely long curtain that goes all the way down to the floor even when your window isn't actually very big. So remember again, you're going to measure the length that you want and add five inches to that length. You're going to measure the width that you want and add seven inches to the width and then double it. And the reason you're doubling the width is because it's all going to shrink by half when you put the header tape on there and you gather it all up. So you have a lovely fullness to your window as well. One more thing to talk about with your curtain fabric. If, you're, if you, the width of the, your fabric is wider than the width of the roll, if you like, if you need a wider curtain, so you're going to have to join the two pieces together or three pieces together, try and keep the center seam all the way down the center so you don't have one width of the roll and a small panel at the side and if you're making a huge curtain try and have the two seams so that everything is kind of split into thirds so it all looks nice and symmetrical. With the length of your fabric be aware that if you have a fabric with a large pattern on it you're going to have a pattern repeat just like when you're wallpapering so you need to match up the patterns so you may need to buy some extra fabric to compensate for that. If you're a first time curtain or drape maker then go for a small pattern where the pattern matched doesn't really matter or it's kind of insignificant. Right, so that's the outside, that's your curtain fabric. 
With the lining fabric that's going to be cut slightly smaller um, so I think the easiest way to do that is to cut the lining to the same size as the curtain fabric and then trim it down. So you're going to trim down the sides by seven inches so it'll sit inside as you see the fabric here and we're going to trim the bottom of the lining uh, by three inches so that the bottom isn't actually attached to the bottom of the curtain it's kept loose there so that's that's to stop the lining kind of dropping down so that you can see that and again that gives a more professional way of sewing um, right so the first thing that we need to do is to hem so I'm going to hem the um, both the lining and the outside by four inches altogether so the easiest way to do this is to fold it by an inch if you have um, a little seam gauge like this or a, a ruler that would help so one inch all the way across give that a press and then we're going to fold this over again by three inches so again measure that mark it this is going to be the bottom of your curtain so it's important that that's uh, a really nice neat even straight line so that's folded over now by three inches pin and press and we'll need to do the same on both the outside fabric and on the lining fabric by exactly the same amount. Um, so I'll nip off and do that. I'm going to machine sew on the outside because you're not really going to see the stitches on the pattern fabric that I've chosen. If you really wanted an invisible look, then it is worth the time to sit and hand sew the hem. So I'll go and press that. I'll go and sew it. And then we'll start to put the whole thing together. So there's the hem on my lining and my hem on my curtain fabric. So now we need to sew the sides together. So starting from the top, right sides together, so the printed side of the fabric is facing inwards. doesn't really matter with my lining fabric, but I need to make sure that the seam um, is facing in the same direction. I'm going to sew down both sides with, there we go, with a half inch seam allowance. So pin all the way down the side, lining at the top edge and the side edge, and then we're just going to do a straight stitch all the way down there. Uh, when I come to the end section, you will notice, if I just join these together, that the lining is going to sit shorter than the outside of the fabric, and that's exactly how we want that to be. So I pin down both sides, sew straight along here, and then we're going to press again. So that's how my curtain's now looking on the inside and I've actually pressed the seam towards the lining. You'll find that a little bit easier. You'll see why later on. Right, now we need to sew across the top and to make sure that my returns or the piece of the outside fabric that curl around are even, the easiest way to do this is to join the side seams here, pull open the lining And put a little mark there so I've just finger creased that but I'm going to put a um, just a little mark there with a friction pen so that's going to that's going to disappear with heat um, you're not really going to see this because it's inside the seam allowance so you could use a chalk pencil or just anything to mark it really and then do the same on the outer piece so that's a little mark here and then this is the top, obviously, of the curtain. So let's fold that back open again and line these two marks up. There we go. And pin. And then you're going to pin all the way across. A big table is really useful for curtain making or a nice big flat area on the floor. You will need an area where you can lay all of this out as flat as you possibly can, particularly when you're cutting them. Uh, right, and then when I get to the side here, again, I'm going to keep my, my seam pointing inwards rather than flattening it open. Line up the two edges here. So when I get to the side bit here where the return on the, the curtain fabric comes around, that should measure exactly the same 
on both sides and that's that's what we're looking for that exact measurement and that's perfect right and again with my one inch seam allowance I'm just going to go straight across the top and then we'll turn this the right side out and again give that a press so that's how the top of my curtain is looking now and I pressed it with a seam right on the top here and then the, the last thing we're going to do at this end is to put the header tape on so have this longer than you actually need and then you're just going to pull out some of the strings by about an inch or an inch and a half and fold that back and then this is going to sit just inside the edge of your fabric here and fractionally down from the seam at the top only by I don't know an eighth of an inch maybe a quarter of an inch up here and then pin it I'll pin it in the center actually keep that nice and square and keep it flat so the pins at several occasions all the way along and then we're going to sew across the top then sew across the bottom and leave the end bits these bits open okay make sure you've got your header tape the right way around as well I have sewn it on backwards before now um, basically it's, it's flat on one side and you have these kind of loops that's where the hooks are going to go so those need to be facing upwards so again lots of pleat uh, lots of pins keep this nice and flat and then we'll sew across the top and the bottom So that's my tape sewn on from the inside and that's how we're looking from the outside. Before I gather this up, I'm just going to finish off the mitered corners at the hemline. So remember my lining is sitting a little bit shorter than the outside and I've already pressed the return back here with the seam facing inwards. What I need to do now is to fold in the corner, let me show you that again. Where the corner of the fabric is here, fold that in so it makes a nice neat line between the edge of the lining and the point of where I've pressed that corner there. So that's nice and neat in the corner there. And then I'm going to hand sew this in place. So I'll pop just a pin in here so I know where. That's it. I'll keep that still. And I'm just going to do a tiny stitch from the corner here. All the way down that diagonal and that's going to obviously keep that fold nice and neat but again it gives that really nice professional finish so when somebody pulls back key curtains or the, uh, the wind blows through the windows and you see the lining it's all finished off really well I'm not sewing all the way through to the outside of the fabric here I'm just catching the hem and just a few small stitches to hold those in place and then of course I'll do the same with the other corner and then we'll take the pin out and pull the tape across the top you see how neatly that sits now so let's just tie this off. And another quick press. That's going to look really neat. So with the tape across the top, take one end and pull your thread slightly, all three at the same time if you can and tie those in a knot then come up to the other end and take these three and pull. Um, you could do one final check um, before you start pulling the fabric up just offer your curtain up to your curtain rail against the window make sure that the length is right um, because at this point you've got quite a deep hem on there it's three inches deep 
So you could, if you wanted to, um, make that a little bit longer or a little bit shorter if you need to. So it's always as well to just keep checking and checking. And then just gently pull all of your pleats together. And again, before you finish this off, Offer this up against your window and just make sure it's the right width. So evenly space out all of those pleats all the way down to the end. The, the more fabric that you have in here and the tighter the pleats are, the more dramatic and the more expensive the whole of the look of your curtain is going to be. But hold that up against your window. If you do need to ease those out a little bit, then do so now. Just make sure that all of your, ple your pleats are even. That's why I like the three inch header tape because look, you get these really lovely deep ruffles on the outside of your fabric and that again says to me a really expensive look to your curtains. So when you've gathered all of this up to the length that you want, again tie this in another knot but don't cut off these cords because if ever you move house or you need to take your curtains to be washed, you'll need to undo all of this. So wrap it around your fingers a few times and we're going to pop the cord inside the gap in between those two pieces, like so. So that's how we're looking now. We just need to put the curtain hooks on and hang it. So this is what your curtain hooks look like. Um, you can either go for plastic ones or uh, brass ones, or there's chrome ones, there's all kinds of different um, materials if you like. The plastic ones tend not to last so long, sometimes they can, they can break. Um, and the general rule of thumb is um, every fourth row. So start at the beginning. Uh, this, this is a way again that you can adjust the height slightly of your, um, of your curtain as well. So try inserting the hook into the centre row. And then if you need to shorten it or lengthen it, you can always change that, one, two, three, four, um, for the bottom row or the top row if you need to. So I'll just even that out a little bit there. There we go, one, two, three, four, oh, got that one wrong. So it's one, one, two, three, that's it. One, two, three, four. You know, one, two, three, four. And do that all the way across. And then all you need to do is to, Give it a maybe a quick press and hang it. But I think you'll agree, it's such a simple, such an easy way of making a curtain. But the most important thing is, only you know that it's a simple way of making a curtain. It looks really professional when you hang it.